In this video, I'm going to talk about how much vegetation I think we should be eating. And this is a real issue for most Americans. I'm going to show you why this is such an issue. So this paper was published back in 2005 in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition by Dr. Lauren Cordain, who is, if you, if you like the paleo diet, which I do, because we have essentially the same recommendations, the difference is that the paleo diet talks about, basically it's a latitude diet. Because if you're living in a northern latitude, you would eat different foods if you're at the equator or a, further, or a latitude further south. The D-flame approach is based upon the outcomes, but the focus is to avoid pro-inflammatory foods in both approaches. And so I've written articles also for the Paleo Diet's uh, updated website that you can go check out. So this is what Americans consume. Now I, I rounded up. And in one, I rounded down. I forget which one it was now. But you're talking about the average American getting almost, it's like 55.6 or 56.6 in the actual article. So I just rounded it up. So the average American lives their calories. 20% come from refined grains, pasta, bread, cereal. Another 20 from refined sugars. This includes the white table sugar and, 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 and the and the high fructose corn syrup and all the other sugars that are out there. And then, of course, refined vegetable oils, which are really refined seed oils, uh, largely in legume oils. So you get it from peanut and soybean. They're legumes. And then seeds would be corn, safflower, sunflower, etc. So the average American gets 60% of their calories from this crap here. Now, the fact that we get we eat overfat, obese, domesticated meat is likely a bit of an issue. But it's minor, 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 minor compared to these absolutely empty calories that the average American eats most of. And you can see the combination of vegetables and fruit is less than 10%. Potatoes I also have in green, because to me, as long as they're not over-consumed, based upon caloric needs and, and glucose issues, not at all an issue. Uh, legumes and whole grains are just uh, less, well, really, it's the, the whole grains that are the least nutritious. Legumes, pre pretty good and fantastic fiber source. So the average American just lives on sugar, flour, and refined oils. Now, this was published in 2005. This image was from the USDA, the USDA, back when my grandmother and her sister were this age, back in like, this is like 1919, I think, this picture. might have been a little bit earlier. And so look what we were told by the U.S. Department of Agriculture urging parents to give simple suppers they are best for their children, that being bread, <laughs> milk, and plain cookies. There you go. So we've been told this forever. So fast forward 40 years to the mid-late 50s, and this is what we were told again. And between this time, the same images, similar foolish images, were created by the USDA or other similar organizations. This is what we were told back in the mid-late 50s. This dairy product is nutritious. You can see what it is. There's nothing nutritious about ice cream cake with cookies around it. Yeah. So I was born in 1960, so a couple years after this picture was taken. So. So if we go back and take a look at a picture from my grandmother's house, my grandparents' house, when I was about one year old, I'm sitting on my uncle's lap. Here's my dad. Here's my grandfather. He was a butcher. And so as a butcher, he was able to get tons and tons of meat. Here are cold cuts. So you got cold cuts? The most nutritious thing they were eating if this was coffee would have been the black coffee because the black coffee actually has polyphenols in it. So what are we looking at here? Bread. My grandfather used to get the most amazing rye bread and uh, 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 rolls, because these are obviously rolls. Uh, rye bread and rolls, they're a little like fresh right from the bakery, which was right next to the, to the butcher area, the meat area, uh, at, at the grocery store he used to work at. So, so look what I was exposed to growing up from a very early age. Of course, a very loving family, which was awesome. Uh, but we were, <laughs> we were just staring at bread, bread, meat, and and you may recognize this if you're old. This is sh the, the old Schaefer beer cans. I haven't seen these in a while. But so, so I was exposed to these calories my entire life. So eventually when I learned, you know, I, I changed and I switched out all of the, of the uh, 
of the cold cut calories for healthy meat, fish, and chicken, and then got rid of all the, uh, the uh, bread calories and replaced it with vegetation. So a couple of years ago, I was at a restaurant. I took a picture of a meal I ate, and you can see a nice piece of steak, a uh, uh, baked white potato with some sour cream and butter on it, and this is the only, this is, this is the amount of vegetables that they give. I, obviously, I already ate one, you can see. And then I gotta take a picture real, real quick. Because this was it. So essentially, this amount of, of uh, broccolini that you see here, a little bit of asparagus here, and a, and a couple, maybe just one carrot, there are, that's essentially zero calories. So uh, what I did also, or what I do, because I like white potatoes that are baked, I take out a bunch of them. So this is the amount of the starch that I removed. So you can see... I didn't eat all that starch. I took it out and got rid of it. And I always order extra vegetables. So this is extra vegetables. It's still not much. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's unbelievable how little vegetables Americans eat. And we are conditioned historically, as you saw from the historical videos, I, the historical pictures I showed previously, but also the way food is delivered today. You get a big hunk of meat, fish or chicken, and you get a big potato, and you get a couple crumbs worth of the anti-inflammatory vegetation. If you get a salad, it's like a handful of leaves, which is basically zero calories. So the average American gets almost no calories from vegetation. You saw from the Cordain article, only 10% of all of our vegetation comes from vegetables, fruit, potatoes, legumes, and whole grains, which is absolutely horrific. So what do Americans do? We look for loopholes, like something as, frankly, idiotic as this. So this is a big old bulb, right? Garlic bulb, and you got cloves on the inside. Look what we're told here. Eating six roasted garlic cloves will heal your body in just 24 hours. Really? Heal you from what? you got to be kidding me. This is just, just, just ridiculous. So we should educate people properly about the amount of vegetation that we need. And it's not hard to do. This is a picture of me talking to... Third graders, look at, they're on the edge of their seats. This is the, this is the front of the D-Flame book. You can see the pro-inflammatory calories there. So the kids were like, uh, this is all junk food. We should be eating more vegetables and fruit. And they're all raising their hands about, we eat this fruit, I eat that fruit, I like this vegetable. I mean, I couldn't get them to stop talking. They were so into it. And down on the bottom, this is the back of the D-Flame book, and I show you the pro-inflammatory calories again and all the diseases that they promote when consumed in excess. And these kids were totally into it, and they understood you got to eat a lot of vegetation. So back to a steakhouse. Here we go. Back to a steakhouse up at a resort in Wisconsin. So I ordered, I think this is an 8 or 10-ounce filet. And, of course, yeah, steakhouses, everything is a la carte. So you know, what did I order? I ordered a piece of meat and all of this vegetation. This is a lot of vegetation. The average person like, oh, that's so much. Not a lot of calories. Was I stuffed? Absolutely stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. So let me give you an example of what people really do that's foolish. So the, the average person would get a piece of steak. They'd probably get a, a big old baked potato, eat half or more of it, pounded with butter and sour cream, which is not a big deal. I mean, if you take out, I mean, to, to me, if you, if you don't do a ton of sour cream and butter and take out some of the starch, it's fantastic. But then they decided to eat that, and then they would have a little bit of vegetation. Now, I ate this whole thing, and... So what would you do if you were uh, at a restaurant like this? Well, the average person I said would eat the potato, eat the, eat the meat, and have a little bit of vegetables, and then be looking for dessert. So let me just show you real quick. This is a, they call it a health warrior bar. I got this on, I forget, it was either an American or a Delta flight a few years back. And I, it's 100 calories. And I put it on top of this one-pound spring mix. This is from Aldi, by the way, which is like maybe $4.25, half of what you're going to pay at most bigger grocery stores. So let's just say you want a dessert. We'll go back to that steakhouse, and you ate your potato. You wiped out the potato. It's gone. You ate your steak, and now you want dessert. So you could easily eat 100 calories. This is three bites. Well, could you, could you eat the, the, the 100 calories of, of, uh, of uh, greens on top of that? should be able to, but the volume is prohibitive a little bit. And that tells the story. You want a volume up on the vegetation so you feel full on the vegetation. So this, what I have, this is the, the, the stainless steel frying pan that I use. And you can see I'm showing how large it is because pictures really don't tell you, even if I had the, the, the spatula in there. Spatula, whatever that thing is. 
it's not a spatula. What is it? I forget what it is. Sorry. Uh, so you can see it's a foot wide. So this is foot diameter. So this, which you see here, got a little bit of, of cooked up white potatoes, not a lot, some bacon, and a pound or more of broccoli. So you can go to Aldi and get 12 ounces of frozen broccoli for like 70 cents. I mean, how come every American household is not doing that every night? If you had a family of four, that's two dollars and eighty cents, so that everyone gets a, gets twelve ounces of broccoli, and you can spend more and get more vegetation every night. So you can eat very anti-inflammatory at Aldi. What if you don't want to use bacon? Because I like bacon. So, but I don't only eat bacon. Here I have salmon and another pound of vegetation. What if you want ribs? Well, throw some ribs in there with a ton of vegetation. Because you want to fill up on the volume of vegetation and embrace the fullness of the vegetation. If you get hungry again, eat something that is less uh, calorically uh, punitive and highly nutritious. So back to the picture of the, of the uh, pound of vegetation. So what I will do is I will, when I'm cooking up stuff, I'll take, I'll eat just eat the vegetation, I'm putting my hand like at the screen. Of course, you can't see anything. So I'll just put my hand in the, in the container and I'll just eat the vegetation, get it down a couple inches so I have room to put food on top. And here what you did, you can see, this is uh, sauteed chopped meat. Might be, I, I do lamb and beef. Always, and from Aldi and other stores, you can get, I mean, Aldi, you get like half price for, for uh, uh, a pound of, of grass-fed chopped meat. So what else do we have on here? Well, you can see onions, and then I threw in some tomatoes as well. So pound of vegetation with another probably half pound of tomatoes in combination with the onions, and then, uh, I don't know, two or 300 calories versus uh, worth, worth of meat. Absolutely. So this entire meal was about 500 calories. 500 calories. Stuffed 500 calories. How about eggs? People say, oh, eggs are bad for you. Wrong. So here you can see, cook up a bunch of vegetation and throw in some eggs. I, when I make eggs like this, what I do is I cook up the vegetation and I typically use water. This, by the way, this, this pan is the same size as the other one. Um, so same, uh, so I use water, cook up the vegetables, and then I let the simmering vegetables on top of it, then I'll just uh, plop the eggs. I don't even add any, add any oil or, or, or butter in most cases. So this is a fantastic way, way to eat eggs. If you're at, so this would be uh, from a meal at a, at a, uh, at, this is like either, this is either Atlanta or Chicago. And so I stopped by one of those, those Tex-Mex places where you stand in line and get the bowl. So you can see this is a, a fork. It's not a small bowl. This is a large salad bowl packed full of vegetation. And so that's what we should be doing. That's how you eat vegetation. The average person thinks they're eating vegetation if they have a side dish of lettuce and carrots and whatever else. And that's like virtually zero calories. It's effectively you didn't even eat the vegetation. Got to eat more vegetation. So you can work yourself up from smaller bowls to larger bowls, and then you can be like me. I will often eat. So you can see this is a, a normal size stove. So this is a massive bowl. I will commonly put a pound of that spring mix in there, add some tomatoes and onions, and put some meat, fish, chicken, bacon, or whatever on top of it. So this is the size of vegetation that I go for every day. Do I do it every day? No. But this is the pr proper way to eat vegetation unless you are a one of those carnivore people who only eats fatty meats, which is to me is odd, but you know, have at it if you want, as long as your markers of inflammation are okay. And you don't do it 100% of the time because no, no culture on earth ever did, even the Eskimos, because once the thaw occurred, the greens appeared, the roots appeared, the honey appeared, they pigged out on that stuff and then went back to the fatty stuff as well as the pemmican. Is that what it's called, pemmican? Um, that they would eat during the, the winter months. So this, again, is, should be the goal for vegetation. You should be doing this, at least in my view. We should be doing this. Humans should be eating this much vegetation every day. To not do this, we're just asking for trouble. So the focus of all my books, obviously, are going to be getting vegetation in there, replacing these horrific pro-inflammatory calories that cause nothing but pain and misery. So these are 
Now, for whatever reason, on the Amazon thing, it just shows up with the Kindles. Obviously, here it shows paperback, but they're all available in paperback. This one's only available in paperback. And you can buy single copies at Amazon or volumes at dflame.com. People will email me, how do you get volumes? Well, you click right here on the Read More, and you can get volume discounts there for each book. As an example, so this book is $24.95 retail, and if you buy... 50 of them, you get them for just 12 bucks, so 50% off. And there are similar decent deals for the rest of these books. And there's also less volume uh, prices. You don't have to get 50. You can get 10, 50, 20, or 30, whatever it is. You can check out if you go to dflame.com. You're already here on, on YouTube, so if you got this far, you please share if you have an interest uh, the, the, the video, because I'm sure it'll have one of your friends or patients or whoever. And then, of course, you can like uh, the Dflame Nutrition YouTube channel.